All right, welcome back. Now we get to deal with uh, a slightly different scenario, but a fun question nonetheless. So the statement is, imagine two parallel infinite sheets carrying uniform surface charge plus sigma on the sheet at z equal d, then minus sigma at the sheet of or z is equal to zero. They are moving in the y direction at a constant speed v. A, what is the electromagnetic momentum in a region of area A? B, what, or now suppose the top sheet moves slowly down to speed U until it reaches the bottom sheet, so the field disappear. By calculating the total force on the charge, Q equals sigma A, show that the impulse delivered to the sheet is equal to the momentum originally stored in the fields. And here's a fun question that's show you the dynamics of the field interchanging with the currents or, or charges. And that'll be a repeated theme of something that is of high importance. All right, so what do we need to know? Well, for this, we need to know what the pointing vector is. S is equal to 1 over mu, uh, where we have E cross B, the cross product. And uh, the momentum density is G is equal to mu, epsilon, mu naught, epsilon naught S. And then we could substitute in to see what that reduces down to. But since this is a density what we need to do is uh, integrate over the space to find the uh, momentum. And from the momentum, we can find the impulse. All right. So A, from chapter 5, which I'll link the question, that is uh, 5.17, if you want to note. We found that the fields, okay, look at this as a parallel plate capacitor, if you wish. Um, this is E, so is negative sigma over epsilon naught in the Z hat. It makes sense based on the field flow. B is equal to negative mu naught, sigma V, in the since the sigma, the surface charge, is moving at some velocity, that is a current, in the x direction. And so if we look for the momentum density, all we got to do is take the cross product of E and B now, of course, multiplying through it, uh, mu naught and uh, epsilon naught accordingly. Uh, what we see here is that the mu naughts cancel from the S or the pointing vector, and the sigma or the epsilon naught cancel with the epsilon naught from the E field. The two negative signs on the E and B fields cancel. And we see that we uh, can factor out the constants and thus we have the cross product of uh, Z cross X hat. And once we simplify that down, you get mu naught sigma squared V in the Y hat direction. So now all we got to do is integrate over all the space. Okay, so from 0 to D, the separation distance of the plates. 0 to y, the length, and 0 to x, the width, or however you want to label them. So we get dy or dx dy dz, and just chug it on through. Simple integral, again, pointing in the y direction. And we see here that um, once we reduce this down, we get mu naught sigma squared v y hat direction, and then the dz integral gives us a length d. And then we have a product to x and y, which we'll label a. Therefore, we get some distance d times an area a, not to be confused with da like um, differential area, mu naught sigma squared v in the y hat direction. All right, so that's, we have some momentum for the sake of some area a. Now for part b, we can uh, use the impulse from the magnetic field due to the average magnetic field at the upper plate, i.e. f is equal to q times u cross b, Shove it on through for what we found. Okay, remember that Q is the surface area times the area of interest, which is why we found a, a quote or a formula for it last time or last part. Plug this on through, take the cross product, and you see that the U is equal to negative UZ since it's going downward to the bottom plate. All right, and then a negative sign from the B field, and you're good to go. Move it on through. All right, so then current one, well, not current one, impulse one is, well, we know from mechanics that uh, the change of momentum with respect to the change in time gives us the force, but impulse is the integral of that force forever, whatever the rate of change of time is, hence I equal FDT in the integral. So we just integrate this force out, and you see we're left with UDT and uh, from zero to V, and you see, notice that once we do that, what we get is V there instead of a U. Or, uh, yeah, we get it canceled away to D. Excuse me. And uh, that's pretty clever. Got to give it to you. That's pretty clever. Um, so moving this on through, uh, what we see after the fact is 
the velocity of patch of area A is actually V plus U, where V is in the Y hat direction, U is in the Z hat direction. But the Y component produces a magnetic force in the Z direction, a repulsion of the plates, which reduces their electrical attraction, but does not deliver any horizontal momentum to the plates. All right, so part two, meanwhile, in the space immediately above the upper plate, the magnetic field drops abruptly to zero as the plate moves past, inducing an electric field by Faraday's law. The magnetic field in the vicinity of the top plate at D position DT is equal to D naught minus UT. And this can be written as uh, the magnetic field for a function of Z and T is equal to negative mu naught sigma V theta D minus Z, where theta is the step function. And we see that by taking a, uh, the time derivative for Faraday's law, uh, that step function turns into a Dirac delta. Okay, again, that has a negative there. Uh, you can go back to chapter one. I'll go ahead and link the questions that we showed that proof in. Um, but nonetheless, the Faraday-induced field is just like the magnetostatic one with the surface current K equal negative uh, sigma V U in the X direction. So E induced is equal to the piecewise definition there, plus or minus, same thing for above and below. And so the induced electric field exerts, exerts, eh, exerts a force on area A of the bottom plate. So we have F equal Q E induced. So if we plug in everything there, remember bottom plate was negative, so that's why we get negative A or negative sigma A. And then the induced field for below we saw was negative. So the two negatives cancel and we get a uh, sigma squared in A, again in the Y direction. And the impulse delivered, and this delivers an impulse of I2. Again, take the integral and we see that it plugs on through. So U without withstanding uh, goes away and we see that we get uh, a D out of that, some distance of course. And then, um, so I dropped the subscript on D naught, reverting to the original notation D in the initial separation of the plates, and the total impulse is thus I equal I1 plus I2, hence DA mu naught sigma squared V, which if you notice from part A is the same thing. That's pretty darn clever. And uh, this will definitely have carryover coming into the next chapter as well, so pay attention.